Hi everyone, my name is Malisha. In this video, we'll be talking about experiments and checkpoints in DVC. So the reason we'll talk about checkpoints is that they're a best practice in deep learning. When you save your model weights as checkpoints, you're able to track when metrics start diverging and you can revert to an optimal checkpoint. And using DVC gives you the tools to do all of this. So we'll start by setting up a simple MNIST project and then we'll go through and add checkpoints to it. So we're going to be doing a decent amount of copy and paste, so get that Stack Overflow keyboard ready. The first thing we're going to do is clone an example repo. You can find this in our docs on dvc.org under the user guides. Make sure you're in the directory that you want to be in, and then we'll clone this repo into that directory. And since I'm in Visual Studio Code, I'm just going to open that folder. OK, so now you can see all of the files that we have, and we're going to go through just a few more setup things. One thing you need to make sure you have is a virtual environment. And I'll open the terminal again and paste another command. This is just creating a regular Python virtual environment. Then we'll install our dependencies, which you can see here in this requirements.txt. Oh, well, first we need to make that virtual environment our source. That might help. So we'll activate this. This is just the the um, command you use on a Mac, you will need a slightly different one if you're on Windows. And now that I'm in the virtual environment, let's install those requirements. All right, that's finally done. That's always the fun part. I'm going to clear out the terminal because now that we have our MNIST project here, we can actually add a DVC pipeline. This is how we're going to actually get to use checkpoints and experiments. You have to have a DVC pipeline set up. And just like that, it's set up. We have this new .dvc directory, um, a couple of different files. And with that being done, we need to add a stage to our pipeline. So I'll clear the terminal again and we'll go and copy and paste from the docs website again. Told you to make sure to get the Stack Overflow keyboard. And you'll find this in the same guide. This just adds a training stage to our pipeline, which you can see in this new dvc.yaml file. And it has the script that we want to run when this stage is executed. It has some parameters that we can update. And really the important part I want you to see here is that on the outs, we have this checkpoint true right here. This is what's going to enable us to use checkpoints in our DVC pipeline. We'll have to add them programmatically, which we'll do here in just a sec. But that is the first thing we need to do. Have these checkpoints enabled in your pipeline. Um, I'll go ahead and clear the terminal like I always do. And since we have all of this new stuff, we have an MNIST project set up, we have a DVC pipeline, and we have a stage added to that pipeline with checkpoints enabled. So this is probably a good place to, you know, make a git commit. So we'll add everything to our git commit and we'll just say we setting up dvc pipeline all right now we have that in our git history we can go ahead and add checkpoints programmatically to add these changes programmatically we're just going to let's close out this yaml and we'll open our train file so we're going to add a new import, which I'm copying and pasting again. Put that in there. This is going to let us 
have checkpoints in our training so all the way down here where we're getting our metrics we're going to add a couple more lines to get our checkpoints working so this first line that i'm pasting in here this is actually just going to print out our um, checkpoints this is the key and this is the value then outside of that for loop we're going to move on to the next checkpoint so this next step is how we get our checkpoints programmatically with those two lines in place we can actually go ahead and run an experiment to do that in the terminal we'll do dvc exp run and i'll make this just a little bigger and scroll up on the code here so you can still see it but this is executing this train.py script and it's gonna start printing out our training epics. First, it's gotta download the data we're using to train with, but once that's there, we'll start getting those epics. Okay, I'm gonna stop the training here. And now we can take a look at our output from all of this training. To see our output, we'll clear the terminal, and then we'll run dvc exp show. This gives us a whole table for this specific experiment with all of our checkpoints. So you can see how our accuracy increases over time, how the loss starts to decrease, and how many steps it took. But the cool thing to note is that each checkpoint has an ID and we're going to use that ID pretty soon, like now. But what we're going to do is say you have a checkpoint that you think is pretty good, but you want to see what would happen if you changed one of your parameters or something. So we're going to apply an existing checkpoint to be our starting point for a new experiment and to do that we'll run dvc exp apply and then choose any of these checkpoint ids that you want to start with i'm going to pick this one there's no particular reason just that one and now that checkpoint is going to be the starting point for our new experiment so now that we have this checkpoint applied to our workspace, let's open up this params.yaml over here and let's make our learning rate just a tiny bit smaller so maybe we can see a difference over time. But with that learning rate changed, let's clear the terminal and we'll run a new experiment with DVC exp run. Okay, I'm going to stop the training here. I'm sure you can hear my computer fan in the background. That just lets you know it's working really hard for this video. But now that we have a new experiment with an existing checkpoint, let's clear out the terminal and look at our table again. I'll make this bigger so you can see it all. But if you look at this new experiment, you'll notice it has that same ID from a previous experiment. And it starts with that accuracy and starts to increment. So you see we start at step four, which is what we would be going to from step three. And you'll see our learning rate has changed to reflect what we did in our params.yaml. Now all that's left is to show you a few different ways you can compare these metrics using DVC. Now that we have all of this data from the different training epics, we have two experiments that we've run, let's talk about comparing these metrics. To do that, take note of the IDs associated with each experiment. So the first experiment is this ID and I'm going to copy and paste that elsewhere so I have it for a little bit later. 
and then get the ID for the second experiment. This is going to be important when we start to look at our plots. So now that we have those IDs stored somewhere safe, I'm going to clear out the terminal. And then we'll run DVC metrics diff and you'll put that first experiment ID, well, first, and then you'll add the second ID. Okay. So you'll see this little output here. And basically what it's telling you is the difference between the accuracy, loss, and step of each experiment. So this first experiment you see, by the time we got to the end, we were at 91% accuracy. This is what our loss was looking like. And then with the new experiment with this smaller learning rate, you see that our accuracy was a little bit lower with a bit of a larger loss left. Um, this is the same data that's shown in that table. It's just a slightly different format. But the other thing that you need to be aware of is you can look at this data as a plot. So we're going to do DVC plots diff using the same experiment IDs. And this will generate a plots.html file for us. So you can open that up in your browser. So now you're looking at the same metrics, but in a graphical format. So the big difference here is that the DF5 line, the orange one, that's our initial experiment run. So that's the one that we start training from scratch. And that's the orange line. And then the blue line is our new experiment where we picked up from an existing checkpoint. That's why it branches out from that other experiment in the plot and stops a little bit shorter. But this is how you can compare your metrics between two different checkpoints or two different experiments in DVC. So I'll switch back to the terminal from our plots. And now that you know how to implement checkpoints, how to start from existing checkpoints, how to look at metric comparisons between checkpoints, let's talk about how you can start your experiment from scratch. So basically, you reset all of your checkpoints. I'll start by clearing the terminal. And we'll run DVC exp run, except with the dash dash reset flag. And what this does is it basically resets all of your existing checkpoints and starts the experiment from the very beginning. Because with checkpoints, if you don't specify an existing checkpoint or you don't specify to reset your checkpoints, it will resume training from whatever the most recent checkpoint is. And as you can see in the first couple of training epics, this definitely isn't resuming from anything that we had before. It's starting completely over. So we'll let this run for a, true, for a few epics. OK, I'm going to stop training here. And now that this has run for a few epics, we're going to take a look at that table again. And you'll notice we have a completely new experiment. So this starts off with that same learning rate that we left off with. And it starts from step zero. So that tells you we're not resuming training anywhere, along with this accuracy that tells you the same thing. But now that you know how to reset checkpoints, you know how to do everything else with checkpoints, I hope that DVC will help you make your machine learning projects more efficient or at least a little bit more fun to work with.